God speaks. Now what does that pastor want to see when he's working in the church? What I wanted to see in Ravi was commitment from the people. Commitment. You see, you can attract, uh, a crowd attracts a crowd. Mm -hmm. And people come for all sorts of reasons. But you want to see commitment. You want to see people who are not just coming as sun and tasters, but as people who are committed to the work of the gospel in and through that church. And it seems to me that what's lacking today in our churches is commitment. We don't feel as if we're giving ourselves to the work. And we're not very often. But commitment starts with true conversion. And this is always a problem I was looking for in rugby and looking at what is true conversion? See, when you get people coming in and going as fast as we were, we were going, you get professions of faith, which are nothing more but professions of faith. Mm -hmm. And there's no work of grace. And in your last five minutes, what is true conversion? When people used to come to me and say, Pastor, I want to become a Christian. First thing I was looking at was conviction of sin. It's the only reason why anybody should want to become a Christian, that they're a sinner under the judgment of Almighty God. If they don't want it for that reason, then I'm not interested. I will put them off. You're looking for conviction of sin. And conviction of sin is not that I'm drinking too much, or I'm gambling too much, or I'm beating my wife too much. It's that I've sinned against God. That's conviction of sin. I've sinned against God. I've offended God. That's true conversion. And with this conviction of sin will come repentance. There is no salvation without conviction. There is no conviction without repentance. Repentance follows it. And there's a thing that's gone out of modern evangelistic preaching. is repentance. You are the yearly today. But it's the core of New Testament preaching. Repentance. Calling people to turn from their sin to God. Not to make a uh, turn the Put their socks up or something like that, but to turn from this into God. Repentance. And following repentance comes faith. Faith that Jesus and Lord is the Savior. Jesus and Lord can do this work. I can't do it. Jesus got to do it. I was looking at these three things all the time conviction, repentance, and faith. Thank God we saw it more often than not. And we praise the Lord for, for his dealings with us in that. But, um, Sometimes there are disappointments in them. In any work of grace, uh, you find disappointments. We had lots of true works of grace. Lots of good men in the church. A fortune like that, you know. Good young men. Many of these young men would come to me and say, Pastor, I want to preach. They were caught up with the preaching. They were caught up with the fire that was going on in the church. I want to preach, they say. Now, how do you know someone got the gift of preaching? Well, you've got to test them. But I would test them on the pulpit on a Sunday. Thursday night was our, was our pretty time. Thursday night was our prayer meeting. And, uh, and I would test these boys there. And we had six, I think. I was looking at this one. Six boys who became pastors. Two to the mission field. God was working. And the work was spreading out. And God was blessing the work. But they weren't all preachers. One boy came to me and he, he was doing a good work. He drove the church when he was important work, reliable, and he worked hard in it, and he was reliable in it, but he wanted to preach. And I said, listen, I've never heard you pray in the prayer meeting yet. How could you preach if you can't pray in the prayer meeting? He was afraid to pray in the prayer meeting. Well, that's understandable. But it's not understandable if you want to get up in a pulpit and preach. So uh, I said, well, you've gone on. You've got to get over that. Well, you got over that. Two months. Then I said, now you're going to do a sermon. I said, we try you on a Thursday night. So I gave him a text. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I gave him the outline of the sermon. And I said, now go away. Prepare the sermon. Well, it took months. I didn't keep jigging him every time. I thought, if this boy wants to preach, he'd have done it by now. But in the end, he did it. And the Thursday night he came was disastrous. I felt sorry for the boy, you know. He wanted it, but he didn't have it. It's nice to want it. But preaching is a gift. I think preachers are born, not made. And it's, it's, it's a gift that God gives. 
and he didn't have it. And um, we, we just trained these boys who went into the ministry for exercising that same part of the ministry. We had a Catholic teacher come to us one, one night, and we're going to the time. We had a Catholic teacher came to us, a young girl in her 20s, she'd moved into rugby teaching, and she came to us, and I spoke to her on one Sunday morning, and I said, if you were a Catholic, and she was a keen Catholic, went to Mass two or three times a week, very keen. I said, why are you coming to an evangelical church if you were a Catholic? Well, she said, in my Catholic church, I've learned about God, she says, but I don't know anything about Jesus. That's amazing, she said, I don't know anything about Jesus. Well, I said, if you don't know Jesus, you don't know God. Because the only way you can know God is through Jesus. Well, she was a bit stuck by this. But she came. And after a while, she made a profession of faith. But after a while again, she stopped coming. And I went to see her. And what had happened was she joined the local Rumblers Club. On Sunday morning was rumbling somewhere over the countryside. And that became more important than Jesus. But it's all right, she said, I can't lose my salvation. You told me. And I preached, you can't lose your salvation many times. But she was throwing my own preaching back at me now. <laughs> I said, well, the property, property is that you never was converted in the first place. Mm -hmm. If you think rambling is more important than Jesus. General election came up one year. And a strange thing happened in the general election. The agent of both the Tory and the Labour one phoned me to say, our man would like to come to your church on Sunday morning. But we were the biggest church in town. And he went to the went to exposure, I think. I said, well, could you come? And they both said the same thing. Oh, man is willing to do the, the reading for you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, that's kind of you. I said, but we can manage the reading. <laughs> you just come. You just come. And they came. And they came on separate occasions, thank goodness. And we arranged for an elder to meet them at the door and act as a sort of host to them and took them around. I was speaking to one of these men, one of these men afterwards, and um, he told me how, how, how busy he was. He was on the, he was a local councillor and a county councillor, and he was on this committee and he was on that committee, and he was oh, so much busy that he didn't have time to go to church as much as he as he ought to. But when I have time, he says, I go to the parish church up the road, top of the road was it's a lovely old parish church, three four hundred years old. He said, I'd like to go to the parish church. He said, and the stained glass windows, <laughs> and the lovely singing, oh, it's so soothing. I said, man, that's not Christianity, that's escapism. <laughs> he said, I got that, we put a sermon tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but many people go to church for escapism. Yeah. Not just that politician. It's a psychological thing, not a spiritual thing. Don't be like that. When you come to church, you come to meet God. You come to meet with God. We were Indian. He came to us. Um, very keen. He came twice. Every Sunday. Bought Lord and a watch, didn't he? We were dead keen. Joined the local Labour Party. Joined him on in everything. And then we learned he was an illegal immigrant. <laughs> I had a phone call from somebody when when I did say he was in prison at Birmingham and they were going to ship him out of India the following day. Or well, the following week, whatever it was. So I mean, God, my assistant pastor, we wrote to uh, Birmingham to see him in prison. And he told us that, what his problem was and why he did it. And if he went back, he'd be killed. And he all the same old story, but he, we couldn't do anything about it. But he was coming as escapism, really, you see. He was using the church to give himself a reputation. And give himself a good name. Give himself some sort of measure of respectability. But why did God work in the way? Because in answer to the prayer of people, they were only 50, but they were keen. I've been pastoring in Cumbran for nine years when they were interested in me going to rugby. 
Two of the elders came down from rugby one Sunday morning to come round to listen to me preach in my own church. Not a, a selected sermon. You can you can give somebody a selected sermon sometimes. But they sat. I was preaching to the sermon about, I think, and they they sat in the sermon. And they still got me. They were keen men. The whole church was keen. They were praying people. And they, uh, a blessing in the church is a combination of prayer and preaching. Mm -hmm. Not one without the other, but both. The preaching I sent, I, think, I, I, I believe that the power of the Holy Spirit came upon me and I went around me in the way I had known before. And I didn't know when I came back to Sandfield, I didn't know that. I knew something was again in America. Um, this power that came into the preaching, that brought vitality and vision and preaching. And I listened to a sermon this week, yesterday as a matter of fact, I'll be preaching in me on Zechariah 3. I was excited myself listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't remember preaching. <laughs> like a good sermon. <laughs> like you, Cobb. You know, <laughs> Zechariah 3. And the man coming from God and Satan accused him. Mm. And God said, it's a brand plucked from the fire. Oh, it's good stuff to preach it. It's exciting, you see. This gospel is exciting. It used to excite me. And if it doesn't excite the preacher, it's not going to excite the congregation. That's sure as eggs. But it excited me. And when the power came down like that, God worked. And what I want to look for today in anything is God working. The only explanation is not We've organized this. God has done it. Mm -hmm. People tell me they've been baptized in the Spirit and all that. Like that. But if they preach it, I want to see the power in the preaching. Mm -hmm. and it's not there very often. Mm -hmm. Not there. But it did come and me. And it came and it lasted for 14 years. I went there in 72 and I left there in 86. That's 29 years ago. Long time ago. Um, and I trust that what we'll see here in Bagdad is that same power in the preaching. Yeah, yeah. Holy Spirit power. Mm -hmm. And we'll see that same commitment from a congregation, a response to the word. You see, when someone is converted, you want to see a change, don't you? Mm -hmm. If any man is in Christ, a new creation. Mm -hmm. I don't believe you have to persuade new converts to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. They don't want to read the Bible, I don't believe they converted. Mm -hmm. They don't want to pray, I don't believe they converted. Whatever else there. It's, it's part of being saved. And somehow or other we've, we've minimized the, the consequence of salvation. Salvation is an enormous thing. It didn't just become a religion. Religious, it's an explosion of grace in the soul. And it captivates, it dominates, it changes, it transforms, it enlivens, it invigorates. There's nothing like it. And when you get true conversion in the church, it's like a fire. One leads to another, another leads to another. And I always believe that the most effective evangelism is an organized evangelism. But one Christian witness to another Christian and brings them along to church. And they convert before they come sometimes, and they convert it after they come at uh, that. Uh, but that doesn't matter. They convert it. And it adds to the strength of the church. Well, that was Rabbi. Thank God for it. Still look back at the Mondo amusement, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But I thank God for giving me the privilege of being part of it and the experience of it. And um, we, uh, we looked that God would do it again here, Rabbi, and that God would do it again here. Mm -hmm.